Welcome to section 21 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Neisseria meningitidis, which you can see right here. This scene takes place back during the time of the Civil War. One of the most famous people in history that lived during this time was President Abraham Lincoln. Anytime I picture President Lincoln, I also envision him wearing his very prominent top hat. Because we've been using hats to represent meningitis, we thought it would be fitting to include President Lincoln's prominent hat in this image. The fact that he has a knife in one hand and a top hat on top of his head should help you remember that this image is all about Neisseria meningitidis. So knife for Neisseria and top hat for meningitidis. Just like in the last video, we've intentionally made the background pink to help you remember that Neisseria meningitidis is a gram-negative organism. This is a gram stain of Neisseria, which we covered in the last video, but here it is again for your review. The stain is red or pink, which is why it's a gram-negative organism, and the bacteria are circular shaped. Also notice that they form little pairs right next to each other. You can see that right here, for example. This is why Neisseria are classically described as gram-negative diplococci. Okay, before we get too far, pay close attention to this house. You'll notice a picture hanging on the wall inside of the window. Let's zoom up on this so you can see it a bit better. As you can see, it's a picture of the Neisseria overview information we covered in the last video. This is to help you connect this image with the overview image, so you can remember all of the overview information when you think of Neisseria meningitidis. We're not going to cover the overview information again, but please be sure to watch the Neisseria overview video. Next, notice that we've shown several clouds of mist in the image. Just like in other videos, we're using this as a symbol for respiratory droplets. So in this image, it's here to help you remember that Neisseria meningitidis is transmitted through respiratory secretions. Now we've added a Civil War medic to the scene. Let's zoom up so you can see him better. Notice that he's an old time medic with some pretty scary looking equipment, including a saw and a syringe. Thank goodness we have more sophisticated medicine than what they had back then, right? Also notice that he's standing right next to several sacks of ammo. Let's talk about the ammo sacks first. Sack sounds like polysaccharide, so just like in our other videos, we've shown these sacks to help you remember that Neisseria meningitidis has a polysaccharide capsule. We've shown the medic guy standing next to the ammo and holding a syringe to help you remember that the vaccine for Neisseria meningitidis contains antigens from the polysaccharide capsule. This is very important because it means that the vaccine can cause the immune system to generate antibodies against the polysaccharide capsule. This results in a strong immune response and confers immunity to Neisseria meningitidis. So again, syringe next to ammo sacs for the vaccine contains antigens from the polysaccharide capsule. Okay, zooming back out, you can see a horse towards the front of the image. Notice that the horse is staring at you with its large prominent nostrils. We've positioned the horse this way to help you remember that Neisseria meningitidis colonizes the nares. Hopefully you remember from our Staph aureus video that Staph aureus also colonizes the nares. Now we've added a soldier riding the horse and drinking some malt beer. Seems pretty reckless to be drinking in the middle of a battle, but maybe the stress is just too much for him to handle. Anyways, malt beer sounds kind of like maltose, so we've added this character to the image to help you remember that Neisseria meningitidis is a maltose fermenter. We've also shown him sipping the malt beer. Sipping sounds like sepsis, so this is here to help you remember that Neisseria meningitidis can cause sepsis. Now let's look closely at the horse's body. You see all those red spots? That's right, this horse is injured. This shouldn't be too surprising considering that it's in the middle of a battle. Anyways, we've included this part of the scene to the image to help you remember that Neisseria meningitidis can cause a petechial rash. Hopefully from the name of the organism, it's pretty intuitive to you that Neisseria meningitidis causes meningitis. However, to make this very obvious, we've shown every person in this image wearing a hat. So think of Abraham Lincoln's hat along with all of the other hats in the scene to help you remember that Neisseria meningitidis causes meningitis. Okay, now let's add a few more characters to the scene to make this look like a real battle. Notice that we've included some Confederate soldiers charging up the hill against this barefooted Union soldier. If you look closely at the Union soldier's foot, you can see that he's been stabbed with a knife and now it's turning black. The black foot and toes represent gangrene because this black color change is what happens in a gangrenous infection. So black foot for Neisseria meningitidis can cause gangrene of the toes. Okay, now let's transition and discuss Waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome. This is a syndrome characterized by adrenal gland hemorrhage and dysfunction due to bacterial infection. We'll represent the syndrome using the house in the image. Notice that the house got hit by a cannonball and it's now on fire. We've also added a soldier next to the house who is attempting to put the fire out with a bucket of water. So water and house for Waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome. If you look closely at the chimney, you can see that it's shaped like a triangle. Oftentimes, the adrenal glands are described as triangular shaped organs that sit on top of the kidneys. So we've intentionally made the chimney triangular shaped as a symbol for the adrenal glands. 
The fact that the fire is going up next to this chimney should help you remember that Waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome causes adrenal insufficiency. Next, notice that the guy who's attempting to put the fire out is holding a lamp in his opposite hand. We've used heat lamps in other images to represent fever, so in this image, we'll represent fever with this handheld lamp. So Waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome is associated with a fever. If you look closely at the house, you can see that we've added a bowl of jello in the window. Jello has a coagulated texture, so we'll use it as a symbol to represent disseminated intravascular coagulation or DIC. So Waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome is associated with DIC. Now we've included a stray wire in the house that can be seen through the window with little shock symbols around it. This wire probably would have been fine had the house not started to burn down. However, now that sparks are flying everywhere, hopefully it doesn't shock anyone nearby. The wire and shock symbols have been included in this image to help you remember that Waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome is associated with shock. All right, that should be everything you need to know about Waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome. Now let's move on and discuss other features of Neisseria meningitidis. We've now added a couple more characters to the scene. Notice that one of the Confederate soldiers is stabbing a Union soldier in the spleen. This is to help you remember that asplenic patients are at an increased risk of developing a Neisseria meningitidis infection. This should be pretty intuitive to you if you remember that the organism is encapsulated, but we've included this part of the scene to reinforce that idea. Remember, the spleen normally helps clear encapsulated organisms. Therefore, an asplenic patient is at an increased risk of developing severe infections from encapsulated organisms such as Neisseria meningitidis. As the Union soldier is stabbed, you can see that some pennies have started to fall out of his pocket and onto the ground. Just like in our other videos, we've shown pennies here to help you remember that Neisseria meningitidis can be treated with penicillin G. We've also shown this guy charging towards the Confederates with a trident to help you remember that Neisseria meningitidis can also be treated with ceftriaxone. Finally, notice that we've added a bunch of Union soldiers with rifles and bayonets to the scene. Rifle sounds like rifampin, so it will be our symbol for rifampin. The fact that these soldiers are using bayonets for close combat should help you remember close contacts. So putting these two ideas together, rifle and bayonet, we get rifampin prophylaxis for close contacts. So if someone develops an Neisseria meningitidis infection, then close contacts should be prophylactically given rifampin. Okay, now that we've covered the image, let's review with the question. A 45-year-old female is brought to the emergency department due to fever, a petechial rash, and altered mental status. Her past medical history is significant for an ATV accident in which she sustained trauma to the abdomen that required surgery due to internal bleeding. Her blood pressure is 72 over 41 and heart rate is 129 per minute. Gram stain from a lumbar puncture reveals gram-negative diplococci. Impairment of which of the following most likely contributed to this patient's condition? A. Reactive oxygen species B. Immunoglobulin production C. Complement production or D microtubule formation. Okay, hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient has a fever, petechial rash, altered mental status, hypotension, and labs that reveal gram-negative diplococci. All of this information is suggestive of Waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome due to Neisseria meningitidis. However, perhaps the most important part of the question is right here. Her past medical history is significant for an ATV accident in which she sustained trauma to the abdomen that required surgery due to internal bleeding. This is a subtle way of telling you that the patient experienced splenic rupture. The spleen is the most commonly injured organ due to blunt abdominal trauma. Therefore, the surgery that was mentioned was alluding to a splenectomy procedure. Once you come to the conclusion that the spleen was removed, you can deduce that the question is really asking about how asplenia contributed to this patient's condition. So the correct answer is B, immunoglobulin production. Recall from immunology that the splenic B lymphocytes produce a large percentage of the body's immunoglobulins. Immunoglobulins such as IgG and antibodies such as splenic opsonizing antibody are important for complement activation and the removal of encapsulated organisms. Therefore, a patient who has had a splenectomy will have impairment of immunoglobulin production resulting in impaired clearance of encapsulated bacteria. A is incorrect because impaired synthesis of reactive oxygen species increases the susceptibility to catalase-positive organisms, not to encapsulated organisms. C is incorrect because the spleen is not the site of complement production. The liver is. Therefore, complement production in this patient is likely intact. D is incorrect because impaired microtubule formation is not a known contributing factor to Neisseria meningitidis infections. This mechanism is most commonly associated with certain drugs, for example, chemotherapeutic drugs. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about Neisseria meningitidis.